Uh, welcome everyone for taking the time to participate in the purest form of government. And uh, we do have a guest tonight, and uh, we'll let him go first, Mr. Don Rice from Metzenbaum. You're on. Thank you. We try to get out of it every year and do this, and we quit over the COVID, so I hope I'm not too rusty and I forgot everything that I need. Um, but I've been known as the candy man, so I ask you questions, and then I ask you guys if you have questions. And let me start with, do you know where our mission is? If you take a look at that, it's on the header and the mission there. Helping people live, learn, and earn. We help people live, learn, and earn in our community. How many people did we serve last year? It's also in there. So I'm cheating. 306. I was going to say. No, 306 is Oh, no, no candy for you. you. I got to give candy back said? now. 1,004. 1,004. <laughs> I can read. Yeah, there you go. Why would you do this? This is why I stink at Jeopardy, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, your 306 is how many people we have that we're serving in a residential capacity. We're helping... Make that a question, no. or he will... Right, yeah, 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 I know, I know. And put it into the question form. Yes. Our folks, Ian, that ran, run the age, our youngest, anybody want to guess how old they are? It changes a lot, but right now, anybody want to guess? As of this afternoon, I asked how young is our youngest. It's not in that letter. No. Oh. So you're going to have to guess. I say one day old. One day, thanks for trying, but it's a little too old. I figured if it says something, I get a candy. Take a guess. Eight. Oh, way too high. But you get one anyhow. Take a guess. All right, three. Keep going down lower. Go ahead. You can take one. One. No, no, no. Take a, take a candy bar. Well, you yeah, get a piece of candy for a wrong answer, too. Tom? As long as you give them an answer. <laughs> two? No. Keep, uh, two. keep going down lower. How oh, Three. Keep going lower. Thank you. We've got one more. Six go. months. Six months. You're getting closer. Keep going sure. lower. Wow. Well, guess. Before they're born. No, but if we do, can, we can go there, but we don't. Can't. Everybody's got candy. Well, I was pretty close. I was the closest one. So far. Three months old. We have a set of twins right now. We're three so. months old. That's our youngest. Anyone want to guess how old our oldest is? Oh, boy. 60. Way lower. Way low? Way low. 91. Getting there. Keep going up. <laughs> keep getting. Keep going up. 98. 98's too high, so now you got the high and the low. Oh. Shoot Mike's through the middle somewhere there. I want to set up a window. Want to shoot through the middle? No, no, I'm done. Chief, you want to shoot through the middle? No, sir. All 95. Right. 93. 93's our oldest right now. So we serve a thousand people in that range. So some, kid, some kids are getting services where they're born with a disability. We send folks into the homes. So speech therapists, OTs, PTs, whatever's needed, development specialists to help that family be with their youngster and learn what they need to do. In many of the cases, about 50% of the time, it's a speech delay or it's something that can be corrected. By the time they reach school age, a lot of the kids aren't needing the special help. They're able to function in a school setting just like a normal typical kid, which is really what our goal is. As much as possible, get them to act like normal in public. Our adults, it's in there. How many people do we have that are actually working in the community? Actually holding a job that pays minimum wage or above. 165. 165. That number in 2012 was 35. We've made it an effort. We actually have a group. There's three people who work on it. As kids come out of school, we help them find jobs in the community. They're earning an income, working alongside. Of course, right now, anybody who wants a job should be able to find a job, right? All of you are having a hard time, I'm sure, finding volunteer firemen. Absolutely. And anything, construction workers or road crews, everybody's having a hard time. We have the same problem. Um, one point this last year, when we did a survey of our providers, there were 100 open full-time positions. It's hard to get somebody when you're paying $12 an hour. You know, they can go and work at Amazon, or they can work at somewhere like that for 18 it's just a different world right now. 
if you know of somebody, the one thing that we are sharing, if you know of somebody who's maybe retired, who would like to foster, one of the new options that's out there in the DD world is somebody who might want to foster somebody who's a person with development of skills. Maybe not the people who are in wheelchairs and needing a lot of care, but some of the folks who are hiring function. Maybe there's somebody who's in their 30s who needs somebody to drive them to work and get them to and from work. Anybody who's willing to help out, we have ways to help get you paid, help you get to part of the provider pool if that's what you're interested in. If somebody says, listen, I don't mind picking somebody up and getting them to and from work a few days a week, that'd be great. Call us. What questions do you have for us? I know, I'm giving you a short synopsis. I'll give one more. That was your main objective. That was. <laughs> what would you guys like to know? I know most of you, Mr. McEwen, you're fairly new, but most of you have heard this before. I've been on the board for 12 years before I came back on the board, and you did an excellent job then, and I'm sure you're doing it now. Yeah, we're trying. Well, tell us about your sources of funding. Our sources of funding primarily are levy dollars. 75 to 80 percent of ours, it changes every year because there's a little more federal sometimes, a little less federal some other times. But without our levies, we do not exist. Our levy dollars get matched with federal dollars in some of the cases. A lot of our residential ones, we're paying 30 to 35 percent of the bill where the feds are paying the balance. Um, so we have to match up with the federal dollars. And without our levies, we couldn't do that. Um, but overall, it, it's our levy. We live and die on our levy. Uh, what happens here in Geauga County, thankfully, we have voters who support us. And so we're able to provide a lot of good services for the folks here in the county. And that's really what it's all about. If you look at our balance of what we spend on residential alone, it's probably in excess of $5 million. If you look at our salaries, it's about $3.5 million. We spend more in residential supports alone than we do on our own salaries. So it's something that's there. The services that are there span every range. And so what else would you like to know? I got one more question then. So you've, I'm sure, seen that all the townships are kind of asking questions as to what we're allowed to spend all this COVID ARPA money and whatnot on. Did your department get any of that? We did. We got it in several different ways. Um, the federal dollars that come through Medicaid where we usually pay about 35-36% of the bill, they picked up that and dropped it down to 30%. So they saved us 5% through their ARPA. That money changes because who's using what this year versus last year changes, so it's hard to say that it was a set amount of dollars, but it, it equivalents out. There wasn't specifically money that came to MRDD from, no. for ARPA. You went through county? Funding. No, we did not get it through the county funding. The county used it other things. Okay. We actually got a lot of our bills taken care of in the federal side of it, so okay. we reduced it. We actually did better because they dumped so much in. We paid so much less. It made it easier on us. Our balance actually went up to the point where we rolled back our levy um, by a quarter of a mil last year. Uh, so with being collected this year is a quarter of a mil down because there was so much extra money in there. And we just said, we don't need it. So, we went back a quarter. Uh, but, sir. Yes, <clears throat> question. Uh, what or who determines the mask policy for the workers in your organization? That would come from me and our board. There's a board of seven people. The commissioners appoint five, and two of them are appointed by uh, Judge Grindel, the appropriate judge. Uh, we follow what the county commissioners basically put forward. So when there was a mass mandate put in place and the commissioners enforced it and said, listen, it had to be there, we followed it. At the same time, we went on the Zoom in a lot of our meetings and there weren't a whole lot of in-person stuff. When we had in-person stuff for clients, that continued to go on and in many cases the mass mandate was there. The CDC did mandate for the residential side of things. If you're in the ICF, which is considered a nursing facility, that had to follow the mandate, so all of their workers had to have masks on. As soon as the mask mandate was lifted and the county lifted it, we lifted it. So things that were happening in METS, I think some of you have been to things like the Republican Party or the Tea Party that was meeting there at METS. We didn't require a mask mandate once they started meeting. Uh, other groups that were there, we let people have their own choice on what they felt. Um, there's times that people need to wear a mask. 
and that's up to them. Uh, we figure that people are adults enough to make that determination, and I don't have to tell them that. Uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, you talked about um, rolling back the levy mm -hmm. as a result of having ample funds. Uh, will that prerogative uh, of um, rolling back, um, will that be available to you again in the second year? That's always available. What we look at is our funding, and we made a promise in 2019 that we would stretch out our levy to at least 2025. We're in that process right now where we put it back in place for next year, so we will be paying it again next year. We rolled it back because we had more than enough during the ARPA funding and whatnot. Right now, our costs are going back up again, so we're putting it back in place so it'll go back to what it was a year ago. Uh, we're not asking for more money, but we can't roll it back and still be able to make it past 2025 without asking for it. Okay, so will that be collectible then second half? Right um, now what you paid, and I don't know what the total number yeah, is, but right. it, it turns out to be $750,000, $800,000 of rollback that we put in place that we okay. could do without. So we roll back that. You're collecting it in both halves of okay. this year from last year's. So in 2023, it'll go back to what it was in 2018. 21. Yeah, so. Okay. Thank you. But temporarily, we put in a portable rollback because we were getting so much. Yeah. <coughs> Good question. Thank you. And yeah, I've lost a little bit of forgetting how to do it. You're my first one to do it. Is that right? Maybe next week. Then I got two more later this week and then next week. Now I'll get better as I do each time. We'll send some to, to wherever else he's going to make sure we can get you ordered out. Hey, here's the question, Jim. Make sure you're asking this. I know some people have benefited from your program. They've had nothing but great time on society. We're proud of who we serve. And we're proud of watching them grow into many cases where they may have not expected to get. And we're seeing kids get to actually have jobs that they never thought they might have. We have some people who are actually working in some of the hospitals and are very much enjoying maybe nothing more than carrying the meals and the medications up to the patients, you know, and the reporters who actually bring things up. It makes their day. We, we're proud of some of what we see. It's fun to watch. Gives them something to be proud of, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Did I... In, Thank you. Anybody? All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Let's, before we get into other stuff, let's approve all the minutes. Any additions, corrections? Who is our pledge leader? Uh, I didn't get it. We'll figure that out. Last week, yeah. Yeah, I thought we did. I don't have a final copy. I don't think we need to get a chance. Yeah, the pledge leader. What do you think about it? Anything else? Any additions? I'd like to add something. If I may, I made the motion to change the name of the Auburn Community Park. I made the motion to do so. And then it says Patrick uh, Kavanaugh and Michael Turing gave their thoughts on renaming the motion. I'd, I'd like to put in there that the motion died due to a lack of a second. Okay. That's accurate. I'm going to that. Hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, from what I remember, we didn't have a very large attendance that not. day. No, the Joneses were horse riding. We were right, yeah. Sorry. Can we assign it to Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl was Carl. here. Yeah, good Carl. Well, why don't we go ahead and uh, revise those and have them at the next meeting? Okay. And see what a couple of items on there. So we will make a motion to approve them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. As was stated in our public hearing, the trustees can make a motion tonight to pass these modifications to our zoning, or we can wait 20 days. Uh, my feeling is the Planning Commission had two opportunities to send us suggestions or whatever, as PJ said, or Frank said, we could get a, a more modification. But if they took two times, they couldn't do it to us. I doubt you're going to get anything asking a third time. So personally, I'm ready to make the motion, but I'll hear from my colleagues on how they feel. Yeah. Or I'll entertain a motion. Yeah. <laughs> this amendment was worked on for well over a year. We've got legal advice. We've got professional advice from uh, the, the, you know, the person we put on hired help us plan these kind of things. Uh, I know our commission worked on it top to bottom, back and forth a couple times over. I know the... Uh, I'm good with it. Yeah, and you know, I mean, we recommended <laughs> some of these to begin with that we yeah, asked them to look into, so... Uh, yeah, if you're looking for a motion to uh, uh, approve the... Amendments. Amendment, then you got one. Is there a second? Second. ZC 2020-2201. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. G? Yes. Okay. Scheduled reports. Frank can go. Okay, so I'll have a copy of the report for uh, February's activities, we had 13 applicants process 12 permits. Um, we had three new houses, uh, which is surprising for this early in the year. Um, we had, of course, one denial, which will obviously turn into a board of appeals situation. I believe, actually, there will be a meeting next Tuesday evening. <laughs> um, and we've had, we've got some other um, pending stuff uh, that people have and just don't have the required data in. So we may have as many as two or three more houses this month, as new houses as well. Uh, and that's all I have. Okay. Any questions for Frank? Yeah, Frank, how many were there so far this month? We've had five, we've issued five houses for five new houses this year already. This year? Already, yeah. So far? Okay. Two in uh, January and three in March. Okay. Any questions from the board for Frank? Okay, Frank and uh, Mr. Emmerich is down sick, and so I understand PJ, you're going to give his report. Yeah, I'm going to go through and find it here. Again. Okay. Uh, Emmerich writes that uh, we saw seven weather events, nine rounds of plowing and sawing. Salt usage was 241 tons for the month. That means the new average to 152 tons. And as of today, 18, oh, just over 1,800 for the year, season. The adjusted yearly average is about 1,750. Uh, we've got about 1,400 in the dome, and we're going to fill that up to meet our contract. I think we contracted 22, so you got to be within 10%, and we're right on. Um, started patching with some cold mix, uh, removal of some downed trees due to high winds. Stafford Road reconstruction project resumed. We meet there on Wednesdays, kind of status update. Uh, things were starting to move then, and uh, unfortunately not much construction equipment has moved since then. Um, we got an updated schedule from them. I think everybody got a copy of that, uh, which, well, I guess maybe you could call it wishful thinking, but the original completion date was to be May 7th, I believe. Now the projected finish is about three weeks later. Well, it's May 24th. And as is everything in Ohio, it's weather dependent. Um, let's see where we're at this Wednesday. What do we need there? We opened bids up here about 
10 days ago. Uh, I think it was four bids on the chip seal and only two on the asphalt. Uh, well, the good news is the chip and seal bid came in under estimate. The estimate was $200,000 and it came in at, I believe, $188,000. $195,000. Oh, one eighty-eight, right? one eighty-eight, two fifty, and that was for Ronyak. Uh, I guess while we're discussing that, let's just. You guys got any thoughts on that? I'll go ahead and make a motion based on the engine engineer's recommendation, which we got back, right? Yeah. yeah. So for Chip Seal of various roads, uh, make a motion to award that uh, to Ronyak Paving. Burton, Ohio, for the amount of one eighty-eight dollars I'll second. Mike? Yes. DJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. That's the good news. Uh, the not so good news is we opened bids for the asphalt resurfacing. It was here. You got a copy of that, Roger? Do you want the letter from Joe? Yeah. That estimate was, oh, I got it, that's right. That estimate, that revised estimate was $720,000. And uh, we also had to make an edit from our original list, wish list of projects to do based on these 20% uh, pretty much across the board increases that, that we're seeing on, uh, on costs for asphalt resurfacing. So our package was $720,000, two bids, and the lowest was from Chagrin Valley Paving in the amount of $781,446.90. Uh, per revised code, I believe it is, we're not a lot, if it's 10% over our estimate, we can't award it. So this came in, and I think that's about 8%. <laughs> well done on their part. Yeah. And the other bid was actually over. The, the 795. Yeah. 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 So kind of knew it was coming. Um, well, we planned for it. And we well, it back. Yeah, we saw it coming, I guess. Uh, uh, that will be the, the you know, barring some change orders, that will be the final cost. I don't know, Mike, you followed, Gene, were you, who was here when, remember we had the asphalt surcharge that one year, were you on the board then? They started sending us bills for $150,000, and we're like, where did this come from? Were you on the board? It was right yeah. in that era, it was right? Yeah, it's right over, it was, that was early in the game. It was probably early that you were in here. Well, that's no longer in any of the bids, so, I mean, so that surprise is not going to be coming. Uh, so these are solid numbers. So it fits, and barring any further discussion, I'll make a motion to award that asphalt resurface of various roads to Chicken Valley Paving for I'll 781, 446.90. I'll second. Mike? Yes. What way do you vote? Yeah. PJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. Yes, Dave. No, just a question. Is it because there's a written contract, is there any provision for them, the or Chimin Valley, uh, or anybody else? Yeah. Is there any provision for them to come back and say that they have experienced so much inflation that they're going to have? No, to that's, what that's, that's what that's what exactly that's, that's what that's what I was just, just talking about. about. Yeah, they can't. That but used it, to be part of the bid package that they could do that, but that's no longer in the what we bid anymore. So it's totally okay. Okay, no way for them to do no. that. No, you can have a various change order on a you culvert a pipe order, or yeah. something yeah. like that, but no, they can't come back and say, hey, this asphalt costs too much, you got to cover it. Can't do okay. that. They worked that in. Yeah. I'm sure they did. And I think that's why you're seeing that both of these bids did come in or higher. I mean, typically they'd be a little bit lower, they'd be competitive around the 720. Yeah, they would. So. And in the end, you might get. But you don't want to put it out to bid again and guarantee it in. No, I don't think you do. <laughs> Not with what's going on now. No. <laughs> uh, all right.
right, so I think Emmerich in his absence, he gave us a written report, and mm -hmm. that's the end of it. Okay. All right. So now we'll go to trustees and fiscal officer reports, and we'll start with Mr. Troy. I'll concede my time since nothing exciting has happened in the last week that you care about this. It's all vacation. Right? How was the weather? And Actually, it wasn't bad. It was uh, the high 60s, mid 70s. But compared to here, it was very nice. <laughs> I see. But the water, pool water was 50 degrees. The ocean water was 50 degrees. So my grandkids spent the time in the hot tub. And it froze <laughs> when they got out. So. You should have went a little farther south. What kind of grandfather are you? Cheap one. <laughs> okay. Mr. Cavanaugh. Uh, Gene, you did such a thorough job of putting this agenda together. I have no personal anecdotes to add at all. Wow, oh, jeez. At least me and you. <laughs> Okay, just a couple things for me. I had the pleasure of attending, was asked to attend the uh, D.A.R.E. ceremony for the Kenston fifth grade class that they have every year. And uh, it was a very nice program. And we got to meet, uh, I'm kind of impressed with how many fifth grade classes. They have eight teachers for the eighth grade. They have eight classes of fifth graders at the uh, at the intermediate school. But it was a nice program. Uh, Bainbridge Police Chief was there and they recognized every every fifth grader there and the program they went through and it was it was very nice to be a part of it. The other thing is on March 23rd as chairman of this board I was picked to go to the Geauga County Public Health District Advisory Council meeting, and at that meeting, we picked a new member to the board. And uh, there were 18 total votes. First, let me say there were some extremely very qualified people. I think there were seven or eight actual applicants who were all extremely qualified, nice people. But in the end, out of the 18 votes, 11 of those votes went to a Carolyn Brakey. She's an attorney. Uh, she gave a, a really, a really good speech, and she had a lot of people from the uh, the county there to support her. They all got one minute to to say why they supported her, and so that's a done deal. That Carolyn Brakey is now a member of the Geauga County Health Board Advisory Board. Comments on that or anything? No, but Gene, from what I'm hearing, there's going to be a lot of more working together with Lake County. Is that right? Is there some discussion of that? Well, there they already work a lot with Lake County on some certain boards, and not everything, but there are some things they do. And I didn't get the impression it was any more or any less of what they've been doing for years past. I didn't no. get that. I wish they would have broke down. You know, we got a meeting on their budget, and. Uh, there, at one point, there was a, a topic there where he, he listed all where the pie chart of where the money, you know, come. And there was one section that said, 400 and some thousand dollars miscellaneous. And one of the trustees asked, you know, that's a kind of a large amount to have under miscellaneous. And he stuttered and stammed for a while, and I'm still not quite sure uh, he expressed where that money was. But uh, he got coffee, greeting cards. <laughs> yeah. you know? I don't know, but yeah, that was an awful large amount to be put in. Okay. Other than that, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. And what they do, I think there's a lot of, uh, as you can know, you know, everybody from reading the papers over the last year, there's a lot of turmoil on that board. And, uh, so there'll be some more, and there'll, and there'll probably be some more. But quite frankly, I voted for this uh, lady. Uh, I know your your wife voted for this lady. She she really came across very professional, and I think she expounded a lot of the views of most people in Geauga County. So. Well, let me just say that I don't know what's going on up there, but yeah, there's, there's going to be some turmoil uh, in. In the health department, and there's some turmoil in the building department, and there's all obviously there's some turmoil in water resources as well. Right, there's people leaving. Some 
for, you know, we're leaving for various reasons, but yeah. Uh, I mean, we've always had this great, great working relationship with the building department. Mm -hmm. Let's see, it's been Auburn, Bainbridge, at least Auburn, Bainbridge, and Newberry. We've always had this great working relationship with the building department, and that's all gone by the wayside. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't quite understand it, but you know, it used to be you couldn't get a building permit without having a zoning permit. Now that's not the case anymore, and you couldn't get a building permit without having a health permit. And that's not anymore. So I don't know what's going on, but it was kind of a shock to, to myself and to um, members of the health department uh, when a permit was issued from the building department here in Auburn without a health permit or a zoning permit. Without a septic permit. Yeah. yeah. And to this date, I don't think there's a septic permit yet. You know, they told me they have one and that, that Hess has designed it. It's going to need a special system and all this other stuff. And they were approved for X number of bedrooms. Well, they've, they've increased the number of bedrooms on the house. And, you know, in the meantime, the house is built. Now, and, uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. I, uh, my observation since I've been back that I remember the 12 years I was on the board, it seemed like from the county on down to the trustees, everybody worked together. I don't see that cohesiveness now at all. In fact, you know, the commissioners knew all the trustees because they came to our quarterly dinners. They knew them. I would think, I know at least two of the commissioners wouldn't know us if they ran into you in the store. They wouldn't know who you are. And, uh, saying that's good or bad, but uh, it doesn't seem to have that that it, that it used to have. Right, I agree. And when you see some of the replacements, like at the Planning Commission, and some other things, the people that were removed, uh, to me makes no sense, but that's just you know, me and I could they, be wrong. They, they, want to, they, they tend to stand alone and say, well, this is what we're going to do. And like I said, yours is a perfect example. You know, all three the health department, our zoning, building, they all have to work together. You can't put one in and not have the other one in. Right. So, and, yeah, you know, you're right, just, you know, I mean, we, we've we gone to great lengths here in Auburn, and Bainbridge has done it as well, and, and Newbury did it. Uh, when you apply for a permit from us, I mean, we've entered into a, a memorandum of understanding with uh, uh, Jago Soil and Water, you know, so, okay, Required data for to get a zoning permit from Auburn Township is the following: you have to have the septic permit, you have to have your driveway per culvert permit, and you have to have gone to soil and water and been approved for your erosion control plan in place, and so that all that works together. Well, it's not so working. Yeah, it Frank, I think I'm three years out from building a house and that's the first thing I did is what order do I have to get this right. stuff in? It's not like what order should I get this stuff is what order and do I, I have know, to get this I, stuff. If a person by calls a, calls my office, Jane and I talk to you, Jane and I, and they're asking about a specific piece of land and what they can do and can it be split, you know, of course we'll give them the parameters zoning wise, okay, you have to have this, this and square footage, you have to have this uh, acreage, you have to have this road frontage, but we always tell them the first thing you better do is you better check with the Board of Health and see if you're going to put a septic system on this parcel of land and where it's going to go. Now, years ago they used to dictate your location of your house. They don't do that so much anymore with these newer systems, but uh, you know, uh, they, you know that we always give that advice. If, you, if you're going to buy a lot here that, that it's not in it. Now, if you're buying a lot in a subdivision, chances are that you're going to get a septic approval because that's part of going through the subdivision regs. But if you've got a lot, you know, on a street that's 
five acres and you want to split it into two, two and a half acre lots and it meets the zoning, but maybe there's a wetlands on it or a large part of it, well, you better go check with the health department to see if you can do it because there's no sense in splitting it to two, two and a half acre lots, for five acre lot and the two, two and a half acre lots, and try to sell them both if there's buildable lots if only one can be built on, you know. So we always kind of give that device, and you know, and, uh, and it says right on our on the driveway permit. If you if you apply from the county for a driveway permit, it says right on that on that driveway permit, subject to Albany Township's approval. Well, why is that there? Well, because of riparian and because of wetlands, we have some control over where your driveway goes. Plus, we have a mandatory 15 foot setback from the property line. So right now, I have a builder that put a driveway in the wrong place. Now he has to change it, you know, and because yeah. they well, didn't you know, You're going to have retirements. People are going to move on. I mean, right. So there's new staff coming on. You know, right. The risk of sounding, and well, I'm the risk try. Of sounding like a bunch of old guys yelling at the clouds up here. You right. know? You, you the, know, we there were pretty good processes in place, and then the new, the new, the incoming just kind of blew them off. Right. And it, it, you know, we haven't had our usual, because of COVID, we haven't had our usual zoning inspectors get, to, you know, we used to get together two or three times a year. We haven't had that because of COVID. We're going to try to do that again and maybe try to get a representative from the health department and the building department there. And so we can, you know, see if we can get back on the same page again. But, uh, you know, it just, it, I know that the health department, in this particular house, the health department was just, appalled that a building permit was issued and I said, well you're talking to the wrong guy because I, <laughs> I'm i a set that they issued the permit before they got the zoning permit. Now the building department did tell them they needed to get a zoning permit, but they'd already gotten their building permit. You know, and uh, so, because, you know, it's, it's kind of frustrating because, you know, um, we kind of tell you that to some extent where your house is because we have certain requirements, you know, 65 foot setback from the road right away, 30 feet off the property line, 50 feet off the rear, those type of things, you know, and, uh, but, uh, so we're trying to work it out, but it's just, I don't know why. I mean, I know they're going through some turmoil. They, I know the building department has lost several inspectors and, uh, and so is the health department, you know, and uh, so, you know, I don't know if it's, we'll have to see, I guess, you know, try to get it back on the page where we can all work together and make it a better place for all of us to live, you know, I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Okay. All right. I've got your regular reports in front of you. Uh, aside from that, I have a resolution here that we need to do our permanent appropriations. Uh, nothing has changed from our temporary appropriations, which were already approved, with the exception of one item. If you look at your appropriation uh, summary report under 2031 Road and Bridge, Purchased services under Road and Bridge, the total appropriation is one approximately 1.6 million. Um, that is up approximately $900,000 from our temporary appropriation, just because that didn't include um, these last two contracts, which, which we just had bid. And so those were put into the appropriations, and that number now reflects that. That was the only difference between um, what our temporary appropriations were.
That's the second line item down on the third page. If you look under your final appropriations, second column over to the right. Okay. Purchased services. That was significantly lower when we were operating under temporary appropriations. Okay, so there's like 700,000, now it's 1.6, right? Right. Give or take. Yeah, it was a little over 700,000, now it's 1.6. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I need a resolution to adopt the permanent appropriations. That would be resolution 2022-12 for permanent appropriations for fiscal year 2022. Okay, I'll make a motion to adopt that. Okay. I'll second. And Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. That's all that I've got. Okay. We're still dealing with the conservation amendment, the parking lot expansion. Uh, we did finally get the maps and everything from Joe. Uh, I, everything's been sent to Joga Soil and Water. I believe we also received a letter from them with what we're doing. And so uh, I know Nancy had sent a letter to the other letter that had to go to the EPA. And she, I, you know, they, we had to send a check, I believe, for $200 along with that. So as soon as we hear from that, then uh, I think we'll be able to get together with the Conservancy. And, and uh, she sent an immediate yeah. update for that, right. too, because right. that's been, this has been languishing, as right. we've been discussing. Absolutely. Okay. All of our volunteer fire department requests, we're still working on that, right? Yeah, well, it's a, we're just kind of... We have what they're looking for. We know how much money we have. We'll just have to get all the projects down and make uh, an assessment of you know what we're going to do with them. And I think part of that comes into what Windstream comes back with. And mm -hmm. If it's viable, whether we want to use any of the ARPA funds for that that project. So it's kind of holding. Right. Town Hall renovations. Uh, Nancy got some figures. We had talked to at the last meeting about doing some updating, remodeling in the old town hall. We have a proposal of doing some carpentry work in there for $3,000 and some painting for $4,500. And I think you both got a letter from, or something from GW Construction laying out what they would do for that money, the demolition, uh, the pre-existing kitchen tops, removal of the pre-existing kitchen backsplash, removal of the sink and faucets to accommodate the insulation of the new countertops, and then uh, put in new. That That's the $3,000, and then the painting is all the walls, the wainscoting with the main gathering area, uh, with two coats of paint, all the windows within the main gathering area to have the casings painted with two coats of paint, walls and ceilings within the two bathrooms are to be painted with also two coats of paint. Walls, ceilings, front door, trim, all to be painted with two coats of paint. All walls within the kitchen are to be painted with two coats of paint. Uh, paint type and colors to be selected later. Is this something we want to move on or further discussion? I, you know, just... Yeah. I think we should just do it. Yeah. I, I'm going to say the, the uh, do, redoing the kitchen and the new uh, countertops looks... That's a pretty good price, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know about painting. I don't know, I don't know about painting. Uh, what do you know? They're pretty high walls, high ceilings, yeah, and they are. scaffolding, yeah. so. But, All right. Again, this is one of those things that, well, we can discuss it and talk, and it needs to be done. Right Just, here. It's a, basically, it's maintenance. Uh, we've got to keep that building up. So I'm going to make a motion to uh, go with the... Uh, those are 12 foot ceilings in there. Both mm -hmm. bid for uh, total bid 7,500 to uh, for the painting and the uh, construction. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll we'll second our motion. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. Okay, new business. Chug County, we have a recommendation to pay Eclipse 
company $55,879.90. I'm believing that's for Stafford. It's for, for the phase of the yeah, Stafford Road. We're completed up to March 15th, I believe. Right, right. Okay, make a motion to uh, pay Eclipse $55,879.90. I'll second. And just to add that that's all part of the original right. contract. So. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. Okay, we've already did the recommendations for the asphalt and the chip and seal of various roads. So we're going to move on next to Weaver Tree quote for $1,185. Now this is to be done, and I think there's a form there that I have to sign, uh, Fred. Yep. This is to take out some of the trees along the fence line so that uh, Donnie Simpson can put up the fence. There's a couple along the sides, and then there's one dead big tree in the middle of the cemetery that need to come out. So we'll need a motion to do $1,185 so that we can get this done so that Donnie can start the mm -hmm. fence. So moved. Second. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. And this has to be sent. You can give that to Nancy. That ought to be sent back. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Penn, Ohio quotes, uh, two quotes for a 540-yard and 180-yard roll-offs for the large item drop-off event and one for a 10-yard roll-off for the uh, litter pickup event. Yeah, Emmerich, uh, he does comparison shopping on this, and he's always done a pretty good job on this. Uh, over here. I sign these. Yep. Right. Yes, sir. So I'll make a motion to go ahead and go with Penn, Ohio for uh, both those. Okay. Quotes. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Gene? Yes. And then let's see, we have a $500 grant from the Geauga Trunk of Solid Waste Management for dumpster and supplies for the litter pickup. I think PJ rolled that into the last motion. I think he did too. And we already did the construction quotes for the town hall. So other than that, Next week we have a BZA meeting on the 12th, 7 o'clock here. On the 14th we have a zoning commission meeting here. Uh, a BZA meeting again at 7 o'clock on the, oh that's Archie wrote it twice, 12th. Uh, the 13th we have the uh, Township Association dinner meeting. Is everyone signed up and yeah. going? Yeah. Yes, we're all good on that. Mike, you're not going, right? No, I can't make it this one. That's the schnitzel. I was going to say, you got long teeth for a Wiener schnitzel? Okay. Uh, on the 18th, we have the Zoning Commission meeting again here. We have a blood drive on the 22nd of this month, 10 to 3 at Adam Hall. Anybody's interested in that? And of course, on the 23rd, the roadside litter pickup event. I was thinking about that the other day, you know. In the old days, I had from Edward Lane down Mun to Bartholomew, both sides. And back then, there were hardly any houses down there. I mean, there was trash. We would fill up 30 bags, just walk from there back. Now you got houses, nice manicured lawns, there's hardly nothing. That'll be a breeze. <laughs> just an observation. Well, you know, you got to be there. <laughs> well, you know, I named him the assistant hot dog cooker. That's all right, I heard. He has been doing that for 17 years. And Does PJ still just show up when it's time to eat hot dogs? Uh, or does he come down? A couple of years I remember having to go home and get my grill because <laughs> yeah. this one broke. So. Yeah, yeah. He, he's there for backup. He's, he's like the back backup. Home. We yeah. got the thing up there if we need a grill. Okay. All right. I think that's far enough. I voted out of Hall on 5 3. Are we sure? Are we voting? Does anybody know? That'll be one day we're going to vote, I'm sure. Okay. 529 Memorial Day service. Now, I know in years past, I don't know what's happened recently, 
Do we still get a speaker for that? We have or? a speaker. We have a speaker? Okay. I can get with uh, Pat Patrick over here and put the final touches on it. Okay. But uh, we still have a veterans committee that's still yeah. active enough and, right. and, and runs the bulk of the bulk of the ceremony. Very um, good. We provide some labor and of course we've moved now. We're going to Adam do Hall. it at Adam Hall. Right, makes sense. We found that the people that come to this prefer to be in a climate controlled area. With uh, chairs. Yeah, with chairs. So uh, uh, we're doing that. Okay. Um, we still go up to the uh, shady side to do We do a, a kind of a pre ceremony here. Uh, it's open to the public, but it's. We, it's just a laying of Some the trustee reef. comes up. We, we try to be here for that, too. Uh, then to Adam Hall. And then we do the valley up at. Uh, Shady side, and I think maybe we can open the museum for the first time in three years this year too. Huh? Yeah. Well, while we're talking about stuff like that, I had two residents from Auburn approach me Saturday at John's Memorial about the old Fourth of July parade that I have, you know hasn't been going on. I think that the fire devils used to be in charge of it. And now we don't have the fire devils, right? We don't, we don't have the fire devils anymore. Anymore, right. So we're well, planning on doing it with the Boy Scouts to have a picnic afterwards. But what about a parade? Who's, <coughs> have we had a parade? We didn't uh, have a parade. <laughs> the Scouts are supposed to take that over. Um, I'm meeting with them next week. I'll talk to them about that. Uh, and we actually haven't talked about the parade aspect of it. We, they definitely are going to do the, the picnic, um, but I haven't gotten into details with the person who's helping to run the parade and everything. Well, I talked to uh, Joey Plafkin, who lives down uh -huh. here, and uh, Matt England, whose parents live over here, and, uh, and uh, Taylor May, and uh, they express interest that if nobody wanted to take charge of a, par a parade, they would be willing to step up and, and at least help or be in charge or whatever if they just needed help if we were still going to go with a parade. Uh, you know, I have, like I said, the, uh, the, the fire department is, is not going to do the parades. Right. So I think we've established that. Uh, I guess what I'm asking is, do we still want a parade? I would say, I would say yes. I would agree. I could excuse the washer cracker once a year. <laughs> I think they get together yeah. for it to have lunch at the station. station's a nice public event too. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell Matt and Joey to get in touch with you and the Boy Scouts or whatever. Okay. And like I said, they, you know, they're young guys. They're full of. Yeah. They're they're. They enjoyed that. They enjoyed being part of it, and maybe we'd we'd be put willing together to put together something. A committee okay. and include the Boy Scouts. I'll let them, them know that. Uh, yeah. To see you. All right. Okay. Great. Right, can I come to your meeting next week? No. <laughs> Good. I'll come on and out then. Okay. It's your building. You can stop by whenever you want. <laughs> Is there anything from the public? Carl, anything? No? Diane? No, no, except one question. Please ask it. Okay, you referenced the health department. Yes. And uh, a gentleman who presented the, the financial report, who was that? That's a good question. He's he's their CEO. He wasn't the CEO. He is their CFO, CFO, young guy. He's okay. also the CFO for Lake County, mm -hmm. and, okay. and okay. yeah, okay. or maybe he said he used to work for Lake County. He doesn't anymore. Adam, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I should have that for you, but okay. yeah, he's the one that gave the. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, with that in mind, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mike. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gene? Yes. And...
thank you for everyone for taking the time out of your day to participate. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>